好，我哋繼續生態系嘅運作。要研究生態嘅運作，科學家往往咧就會研究食物鏈嘅。食物鏈咧就係顯示咗生物之間佢哋嘅攝食關係啦。例如樹木就俾蟲仔食，蟲仔就俾雀仔食。食物鏈仲會顯示咗喺生物之間佢哋嘅能量同埋物質嘅傳遞方向。又例如植物裡面嘅化學能。就會咧經過攝食傳咗俾只蟲仔，蟲仔嘅化學能就會傳咗俾只雀仔，物質亦都係一模一樣啦。咁以下咧就係一個食物鏈，草就俾兔仔食，兔仔俾蛇食，如此類推啦。咁我哋記一記啦，喺呢個分解者同埋陽光咧，我哋係唔會顯示喺呢個食物鏈裡面嘅喎。所以咧，我想問下面呢幅公仔，呢、這個算唔算食物鏈啊？陽光嘅光能就俾植物吸收咗，佢就會形成佢嘅化學能。呢啲化學能就會經過攝食傳俾只毛蟲，毛蟲就俾只雀仔。呢一條算唔算食物鏈咧？答案就唔算嘅，因為食物鏈我哋唔會畫個陽光入去嘅。食物鏈咧有好多種，有長有短，有唔同嘅生物，有唔同嘅攝食關係。不過咧。無論你係乜嘢嘅食物鏈都好，其實組成一條食物鏈都有三個嘅角色嘅。好，第一個咧就係叫做生產者啦，嘅定義就係綠色嘅植物，或者咧可以係啲藻都得噶，未必一定係植物嘅。佢就能通過光合作用呢個過程，將陽光固定為化學能。咁呢個就係生產者啦。咁舉個例，呢度有條食物鏈啦，咁綠色嘅植物咧，呢一個咧就係生產者啦。咁除咗生產者以外咧，其他嗰啲咧，我哋就叫做消費者啦。消費者嘅定義咧，佢哋就係會消耗生產者嘅化學能嘅。所以咧，草蜢、蜘蛛、蜥蜴、蛇，其實佢哋都係咧，無論直接同間接，都係會用到生產者嘅化學能嘅。咁消費者咧，我哋仲可以將佢分為初級消費者、次級消費者同埋三級消費者。初級消費者嘅定義咧，就係佢係直接食植物嘅，我哋呢個就叫做初級消費者啦。次級消費者咧就係蜘蛛，呢、这個就係次級。而三級消費者咧就係呢啲啦。喺一條食物鏈裏面，除咗陽光，我哋唔會滑落去啦。仲有一個分解者，我哋都唔會滑落個食誒、呃、食物鏈裏面嘅。咁分解者嘅定義之前都講過噶啦，佢會將啲已死咗動物同埋植物嘅屍體裡面嘅一啲有機嘅物質，例如蛋白質啊、脂肪啊、糖分啦，將佢分為成一啲冇機物，例如硝酸鹽或者礦物鹽啦。咁喺呢個分解嘅過程嗰陣時，分解者係能夠攞到。佢需要嘅營養嘅，咁佢亦都將呢啲無機嘅物質咧，將佢釋放俾翻大自然嘅生產者，咁咧佢就可以咧繼續俾植物吸收咧，去繼續做佢哋嘅啊自己嘅身體組織。好，我哋一齊望下其中一條食物鏈，佢有啲咩特性先。咁當咧，我哋咧好多時，我哋會誒睇、呃、到呢度有一個食物鏈喺呢度啦。咁我哋咧從個數目方面去睇嗰啲生物，究竟有啲咩關係，有啲咩模式你見到咧？啊，例如數量方面，你覺得草蜢多定係雀仔多咧？冇錯，草蜢咧就好多隻嘅，雀仔就會少啲嘅。蛇多定雀仔多咧？咁亦都係蛇係少啲嘅，最少係咩？最少係貓頭鷹嘅喎、哦。好啦，咁點解喺一個食物鏈嗰度，我哋一路沿住呢個食物鏈行，嗰啲生物嘅數量係會越嚟越少嘅咧？咁原來咧，啲科學家就話啦，沿住食物鏈，我哋嘅能量嘅流動啦，係會不斷有能量散失嘅喎、哦。咁點解咩咩叫能量散失咧？我舉一個例啦。如果你攞個電筒去射住一棵植物 ，OK， 呢度當然有光能射出嚟啦。但我想問啦，呢度全部嘅能量係咪都一百個 percent 能夠俾到呢棵植物啊？唔
係咪一百個 percent 傳曬過嚟咧？唔會嘅，佢可能只係得大約我諗七十零個 percent 到啦。點解咧？因為呢個電筒其實係有啲熱能咧喺呢度咧，係可能散失咗嘅。咁所以咧，原來沿住一個食物鏈一路咁樣行嗰陣時，啲科學家就話有能量會散失嘅喎。咁<咳>能量又點解會喺食物鏈嗰度會散失嘅咧？咁咧就要睇下呢度啦。咁點解能量會散失咧？原來咧，能量喺個食物鏈裏面咧，佢係以一個食物嘅形式傳遞嘅。咁我呢度咧就有一條嘅食物鏈喺呢度。咁我哋咧就唔再講話呢一層、呢一層、呢一層啦。我哋咧俾一個比較專業嘅名，我哋叫呢啲叫做營養級。咁我哋一齊數一數，以下呢條嘅食物鏈究竟有幾多個營養級啦？呢、這個唔算食物鏈嘅其中一個部分，我哋將佢查咗佢。食物鏈咧就由生產者開始嘅啫，所以呢個係第一個營養級，呢、這、一個就係第二個營養級。呢、这個咧就係第三個營養級，呢條咁短嘅食物鏈就有三個營養級，而沿住呢個咧營養級一路咁樣行落去嗰陣時咧，我哋就會出現能量散失嘅。好啦，咁我哋咧望到呢一個嘅食物鏈，呢度咧啊食物鏈就唔計陽光噶嘛 ，OK， 我呢度畫畫咗佢 ，OK。<咳>沿住呢個食物鏈啊，喺每一個營養級，你會見到啦，有啲箭嘴嘅方向指咗出嚟咧。呢啲就係一啲能量嘅散失，由第一層嘅營養級去到第二層嘅營養級套仔，你會見到呢度有個箭嘴，又有能量喺呢度散失，呢度又有能量散失，呢度又有能量散失喎。咁如此類推啦，咁考下你啊！你覺得頂級消費者呢只鷹，佢得到嘅能量係應該係最多定最少啊？冇錯啦，答案係最少噶，因為喺佢之前嘅營養級，每一個位都有能量散失喎、哦。好啦，咁我哋咧留意呢能量嘅散失咧，我哋可以將佢分為兩大類去睇嘅。第一類就係營養級中同埋營養級間。咩叫營養級中咧？嗱，呢一個就係我哋叫做一個營養級啦。OK， 咁營養級中咧就係呢個位啦，中。好，第二個營養級咧就係呢度啦，兔仔啦。營養級中咧就係呢個位啦，營養級中。第三個營養級啦就呢個位啦，營養級中就係呢個位啦。如此類推啦。好，而營養級間咧，我用另外一個箭嘴去代表啦，就係、是、喺一個營養級同另外一個營養級呢一個咧，我哋就叫做營養級間啦。好啦，咁你而家咧就要自己啦，去做咗呢啲嘅 label 先，營養級中同埋營養級間。咁即係其實咧，我哋會留意到啦，哇，營養級中又有能量散失，營養級間又有能量散失。咁唔怪得佢到個肚，喺個隻鷹嗰度嘅能量係咁少啦。咁我哋咧嚟緊又睇下啦，營養級中又點解會有啲能量散失？營養級間點解又會有能量散失啊？好啦，咁我哋咧而家先睇一睇呢只兔仔，佢呢個營養級中點解會有能量散失先？能能量散失喺營養級裡面咧，我哋就係主要嚟講就經過呼吸作用。呢、这個過程咧，佢係放能量嘅，並且佢會係以熱能嘅形式咧產生嘅。所以如果你摸一摸自己條頸，你都會感覺到係相當啲熱啦。咁你而家條頸不斷有熱能散失嘅，呢啲散失嘅熱能，咁當然咧就唔會傳到俾下一個營養級嘅蛇去運用到。所以咧，營養級中必定會有能量散失。呢啲能量散失嘅原因咧，就係、是、呼吸作用釋放嘅熱能。咁<咳>喺營養級間又點解會有能量散失咧？咁我哋舉一舉個例咯喎，呢度有隻斑馬，呢度咧就有下一個營養級咧，呢、這個消費者就係只獅子。咁由斑馬去到獅子呢個營養級間，究竟點解會有能量散失咧？咁我哋可以望一望啦。嗱，你可以計嗰個三巴巴隻腳呢、這個。呢嚿呢個咁嘅提啦，佢嘅毛髮啦，佢嘅骨絡啦，嗯
，仲有可能只斑馬咧，佢仲有之前未死嗰陣時都有啲排泄物啦。OK， 呢一啲嘅全部你覺得只獅子會唔會食啊？只獅子唔食嘅，只獅子咧佢淨係會食肉嘅啫。所以由斑馬呢一個營養級去到獅子呢個營養級，我哋咧原來會有好多能量係散失咗。能量點解會散失啊？因為第一個就係啲毛啊、骨啊嗰啲，我哋叫沒有被攝食嘅生物部分，例如係骨，例如啲毛髮，呢啲都有能量嘅價值嘅。不過就獅子唔食，所以呢度咧就係第一個散失嘅能量嘅來源啦。第二個咧就是、斑馬嘅糞便咧排咗出嚟啦，呢啲都有能量價值嘅喎，但係只獅子係唔會食嘅。第三個嘅斑馬，佢有啲、呃、一啲消化唔到嘅物質。咁我哋咧，只獅子都係唔食，呢啲就係流失能量嘅途徑啦。好啦，咁我哋記一記呢啲流失能量嘅，例如營養級中同埋營養級間嘅能量，大家大約佔嘅百分比幾多咧？好，第一個草呢個營養級，去到牛呢個營養級，喺呢個營養級間散失嘅能量多唔多啊？係超多嘅，因為第一個。草去到牛，原來咧成塊草，你淨係得少部分嘅草係俾只牛食咗嘅啫。咁牛再去擺一次俾只獅子食，呢度咧又會有幾多嘅能量去到俾獅子咧？咁睇睇啦，營養級間有幾多啊？啊，第一呼吸作用會散失咗啲能量，呢、这個屬於營養級間佔咗三成。<咳>好啦，仲有啊。有一啲牛嘅部分，例如啲骨，獅子唔食；又例如啲毛髮，獅子唔食。呢啲咧又佔咗六成喎，又存唔到落去下一個營養級嘅。哇，仲有啲排泄物嘅形式，所以咧大家記一記個數啊。其實真係去到只獅子下一個營養級啦，扣一扣咗咧，係少過十個 percent 嘅。我哋總結下啦。身體係四個重要嘅概念咧，我哋而家學緊呢個咧，我哋就叫做能量流。喺一個食物鏈，能量嘅流動咧，佢係會不斷流失嘅，而流失嘅途徑咧，就分營養級中同埋營養級間。營養級中，大家就係記住啦，係呼吸作用嗰陣時，熱能嘅散失。亦都第二個營養級中咧，就係、是、嗰一層嘅生物咧，佢進行咗好多代謝嘅活動，佢用咗啲能量去做生長啦，去做活動啦，去做修補。而呢啲嘅能量咧，都係喺個營養級中就已經散失咗，係唔會傳去下一個營養級嘅。營養級間又點解會有能量散失咧？主要嚟講就係未被攝食嘅身體部分同埋一啲嘅排泄物。好，我哋做一個小結啦。沿住一個食物鏈咧，我哋咧有喺個身體有一個叫做物質循環啦，有一個叫叫做啊能量嘅傳遞。咁咧，我哋記住啦，喺物質嘅循環咧，喺個身體係裡面咧，係能夠自給自足，係一個圓圈嘅形式咧，能夠咧可以咧不斷循環作用嘅。不過能量喺一個身體係咧，你可以望到啦，光能變做化學能，跟住咧。佢係一條直線去，原來能量啦係唔能夠循環作用嘅。好，我哋望一望第一條嘅題目啦。好啦，我哋望一望呢條題目 A 解釋喺每一個營養級中儲存於生物量裡面嘅能量與其所獲得嘅能量。嘅差異，咁<咳>呢度咧就有三個營養級，第一個營養級啦，可能就係啲草嚟嘅。好啦，呢度咧就有第二個營養級，可能咧就係兔仔。呢度有第三個營養級，可能咧就係一啲嘅獅子啦，或者係狗。好啦，草咧就係生產者。初級消費者就兔仔，次級消費者咧就係狗。好啦，咁啊，生物獲得嘅能量
，同埋能夠處喺嗰個生物裡面嘅能量。咁呢兩個係咩意思咧？例如光能射落去個波植物嗰度，但係能夠處喺波植物。裡面經過光合作用，變為植物自己嘅化學能呢？原來呢，就只係得八百六三隻。啊，點解我射咁多光落去？最尾點解棵植物淨係得翻、呃、部分嘅光能係能夠變咗化學能嘅？因為有啲光可能部分反射咗咯。好啦，又例如啦，跟住咧呢度咧就係、是、植物嘅化學能。OK， 咁傳落去下一個營養級嗰度咯喎。咁又係會少咗㗎喎，咁又點解呢？好啦，咁我哋不如呢，就而家將呢度嘅箭嘴呢，我哋就將佢可唔可以你幫我畫邊啲箭嘴係營養級中嘅 ？OK， 邊啲箭嘴係營養級間嘅？我哋呢，就分別用兩種唔同嘅顏色呢，嚟而家游一游咗佢先。好，咁啊，游完咯喎，營養級中，我哋呢就用黃色，呢、這個呢就係營養級中。營養級間呢，我哋就用另外一隻顏色呢、这個就係營養級間啦。好啦，咁啊，先睇第一個題目，佢兩分嘅解釋每一個營養級裡面處喺生物裡面嘅能量，同埋同佢獲得嘅能量嘅差異。你覺得呢句説話係叫你解釋營養級中個戰罪啊？定營養級間嗰個戰嘴啊，冇錯啦，其實係叫你解釋營養級中呢個黃色嘅戰嘴腳。好啦，咁呢度有兩分，我哋點攞呢？好，逢係見到題目有差異兩個字，你第一分咧就一定要講佢係有咩數值上嘅變化，係多咗啊定少咗呢？好啦，咁我哋會睇到啦，喺呢啲營養級裡面。咦，我哋會望到三八三變六啊七，三三六八變一四幾，二零幾變八百幾。喺呢個營養級裏面咧，全部佢攞到嘅能量咧，都係咧係較少嘅，少咗嘅。咁點解啊？營養級中，我哋淨係會咧有呼吸作用，釋放嘅熱能咧呢啲散失咗，所以呢啲咧其實就係呼吸作用啦。散嘅能量嚟嘅，好啦 ，B 個題啦喎，是提出兩項理由解釋點解喺每一個營養層所獲得嘅能量係較前一個營養層所攞到嘅少，咁你覺得而家又叫你解釋邊個戰嘴啊？冇錯啦，就係、是、營養級間打斜呢啲戰嘴，而家叫你去解釋。咁營養級間有啲咩能量係會散失㗎？就係、是、呢個啦，沿住呢個食物鏈 ，OK， 由於佢係會以食物嘅形式傳遞嘅，大粒星星咯，所以咧有一啲部分唔食嘅，例如骨同毛髮啦，呢啲地方我哋會有能量散失。仲有喎，排泄物，我哋亦都唔會咧傳到上去下一個營養級嘅。第三個部分。一啲消化唔到嘅物質，我哋亦都傳唔到去下一個營養級嘅。好啦，以下咧你就會望到啦，呢度咧就有個食物鏈嘅。咁其實設計呢個生態系嗰陣時咧，嗰、那個設計師咧佢就希望咧呢個生態系係穩定啲啊，定係冇咁穩定好咧？咁當然係穩定啲啦。好啦，咁喺呢個生態系裏面咧，如果我哋好似喺左邊呢度。係一個食物鏈嘅形式存在，你覺得呢個生態係穩唔穩定嘅？應該係相當之唔穩定。點解啊？當可能咧有一日有一隻炸草蜢啦、炸蜢啦，佢可能咧就感染咗有一隻嘅疾病喎，嗰只病毒攻擊佢，咁全部嘅炸蜢咧就生病死曬咯喎。咁咧跟住你可以會望到啦，喺呢個食物鏈嗰度
。由於青蛙佢淨係食呢啲嘅燥螨，如果你啲燥螨真係冇曬，打落呢啲全部嘅都一齊會全部死曬嘅。所以咧呢一、这個生態係係極度唔穩定嘅。咁如果真係要做到一個生態係比較穩定啲咧，嗯，設計師咧就唔用一個食物鏈嘅形式去整一個生態啦。佢整咗一個叫做食物網嘅形式出現喎，咁形成咗個食物網，你可以睇到啦。我哋舉個例，狐狸啦，咦？萬一有一日全部嘅松鼠感染咗肺炎死曬喎，咁你估下呢啲狐狸會唔會絕種啦？狐狸就話：哈，我唔食呢個嘅啊松鼠，我仲有咧呢一種松鼠食，我可以食雀仔，所以其實咧，我覺得唔會死嘅。所以如果咧，我哋一個生態係佢哋嘅攝食關係係以一個食物網嘅形式存在咧，其實個生態咧就會變得穩定多啦。好啦，以下咧就有四條嘅食物鏈。咁我想問咧，你可唔可以將呢四條嘅食物鏈寫翻變做一個食物網咧？咁啊，如果要寫成一個食物網咧，我哋咧都有啲要求嘅喎、哦。舉個例，呢度有幅圖啦。咁我哋咧要將佢寫成一個食物網啦，我哋咧就有呢個嘅規則嘅。咁咧第一生產者咧，我哋就會咧寫喺最底個部分啦，寫綠色植物。初級消費者咧，我哋就會寫喺呢一層噶。次級消費者咧就寫喺上高，最尾頂級消費者咧就最高。跟住咧涉食個關係咧，就綠色植物比毛蟲食，我哋個戰取方向咧就向呢邊指。好啦，咁而家咧，你就將呢四條嘅食物鏈啦，將佢就寫翻形成一個食物網先。好啦，咁啊，畫完嗰個食物網咧，就應該係咁樣嘅。咁大家 post 做片咧，去將個答案抄翻佢啦。好，咁啊。作為一個頂級消費者，舉個例，一隻獅子，你覺得佢中意一條長嘅食物鏈啦、啊，定一條短嘅食物鏈咧、啊？好啦，答案咧就要睇下邊條食物鏈嘅能量流失較多，嗰條食物鏈咧就冇咁有效用嘅。咁所以咧，我哋如果作為一個頂級消費者咧，我哋就會希望咧能夠有條短嘅食物鏈啦、啊。係較好嘅，因為佢能夠提供嘅能量咧係會多啲嘅，所以咧我而家就咁望住呢幅圖啦，我立落去啦，綠色植物啦，去兔仔啦，去蛇啦，去鷹啦，呢度涉及幾多七個營養級啊？一、二、三、四，呢條食物鏈咧都唔錯。好啦，但係如果有啲誒嘅食性營養級係多啲咧，我諗個效率就會低啲。舉個例呢條咯，一、二。三四五咁呢一個咧五層嘅營養級咧，傳遞嘅能量咧就相對就會少啲啦。所以咧短嘅食物鏈咧，其實係比長嘅食物鏈咧係能夠支持更加多嘅頂級消費者嘅。食物鏈越長，佢所誒、呃、營養級就會更加多，散失嘅營養、散失嘅能量亦都會叫嘅比較多嘅。好啦，大家望下呢一隻係咩雀仔？呢一隻咧係好出名，我哋叫做白頭雕，係美國一個國徽咧就有呢只雀仔嘅。佢左邊咧就夾住咧、呃、有啲樹葉，咁呢啲樹葉就代表和平啦。呢邊咧就代表呢只鷹係相當勇敢嘅。咁呢只鷹好得意噶，你影親相咧，佢都要打側個頭咧向住左邊咧咁樣影嘅喎。喺十八世紀嗰陣時咧。我哋咧仲有好多隻腳，五十萬隻，但係咧突然間唔知點解去到二十世紀咧，就剩翻五百隻啫喎。呢、这、一個係一個面臨絕種嘅情況。不過近年咧又已經回升翻。好啦，咁點解嗰只鷹佢無端端又會死咗咁多咧？咁其實原來咧喺嗰陣時美國喺嗰個年代四十至五十年代咧，佢哋發明咗一種殺蟲藥，就叫做 DDT。個化學形式就係呢個嚟嘅。咁嗰陣時咧，我哋咧啲科學家就話 DDT 咧呢一隻嘢咧係無色無味嘅殺蟲劑，佢係對人體冇害，咁即係好似水咁咯。哇！咁啲人咧一聽到
，哇，咁好用啊，又對人冇害，又無色又冇味啊，哇，咁就一窩蜂咁去用啦。咁咧，我哋以下咧就睇下 DDT 咧，佢究竟有幾被廣泛使用，而最尾咧係影響咗自己嗰只國雀嘅生存喎。To begin with, this new pest killer is a DDT preparation. We realize what that means. Once a bug comes in contact with DDT, he's lost. All he has to do is just walk on any pestroid-treated surface. DDT is absorbed through the feet and spreads throughout the insect's entire nervous system. The effect is disastrous. DDT seems to literally drive bugs crazy. But not for long. DDT next paralyzes, then kills. 咁我哋再睇下 DDT 咧，係有幾被廣泛使用先。It begins with the war-born development of DDT. This diabolical weapon of modern science saved millions of humans, but killed billions of insects. Man, with this newly discovered force, has at long last gained the upper hand in our age-old struggle. The really heavy blow fell only a few months ago. It came from laboratories where top scientists from famous universities and from industrial and government organizations collaborated to develop something new and different. They succeeded. They perfected Pestroy, the most effective weapon man has ever wielded against insects. In both its forms, powder and liquid, Pestroy means doomsday to us insects. For this new insect destroyer contains a lot of DDT, not just a little. Its DDT content is even higher than government specifications. But the really sure kill feature of this insect killer isn't simply that it contains DDT. It's the way that it makes sure that bugs get the DDT that's in it. For example, take this liquid form, Pestroid DDT synthetic resin coating, ideal for vertical surfaces. It's brushed on easily and quickly, and dries in half an hour. It forms a clear, long-lasting protective coating, scarcely noticeable on most surfaces. Other preparations, sprays, for instance, not only irritate the nasal passages and fog up the atmosphere. But quickly lose their effectiveness as the fog is dissipated. As a result, spraying must be repeated time after time. But not so with this. Pestroy goes right where it should go to kill insects, and once applied, it keeps right on killing them, week after week, month after month. Here's why: it's compounded with a new type of synthetic resin which binds DDT to any surface, makes it cling, keeps it from brushing off or blowing away. After application, DDT particles form at the surface of the coating, right where the insects walk, creating a long-lasting booby trap for insects. These crystals stay put. They are densely matted, not spindly and loosely knit, not easily shaken off or blown away. Pestroid liquid coating can be applied wherever insects are found, around doorways, for instance. On screens, where it not only kills insects but also tends to keep the screen wire from rusting. In lockers, where bugs always go in search of food or clothing. On fruit and vegetable stands. The happy hunting grounds for all types of insects. On tables and benches at picnic grounds. In and around basement drains. Garbage and refuse receptacles of all kinds. Cabins and galleys of boats. Anywhere and everywhere bugs like to go. The same deadly effectiveness of the liquid form is found in the pestroid powder, 
another constant threat to insect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This particular preparation is recommended for horizontal surfaces. so easy to apply because of a new efficient dispenser packet. All people have to do is to press the patented top like this. It's a handful of concentrated depth. This powder is truly activated. It contains stabilized pyrethrum, an ingredient which literally stampedes insects from their hiding places to bring them into contact with DDT indoors or outdoors, stirs them up, drives them out of cracks and crevices, places that hitherto have been home sweet home for insects. Yes, it gets in where DDT can really do a thorough job. And it's perfect for ridding Fido of those unwelcome house guests. This new activated DDT powder also comes in a large pump type dispenser that's sure death for insects over large areas outdoors. It's made to order for around wood piles, barbecues, patios, house foundations, and so forth. Anywhere and everywhere, people want to make outdoor life around home more comfortable. It's also good for use on swamps and pools of stagnant water. Campsites and wherever else bugs like to breed and gather. Hola,大家都看到了,这个相当年呢, 一般的人,他們就說這個DDT對人是沒有害的 that they can never see coming. The bald headed eagle. Tambowi 當它入了一個動物的體內 Ying 
零零零零零一 ppm 咧係一個好細嘅單位 parts per million。咁喺呢個濃度嗰陣時咧，真係對人體係冇害嘅。不過咧，當佢入咗水，佢跟住就會進入個食物鏈咯喎，微細嘅植物吸咗呢啲冇害咁咁稀嘅呢啲 T 咧，佢吸咗入去。一個營養級就係你睇下，由零點零零零零一個 ppm 就升咗去高咗差唔多一千倍嘅濃度，變咗零點零一五個 ppm 啦。再高一個營養級咧，就零點零一五變作五啦，又高咗一千倍。咁啊，細魚食小甲殼動物又高咗兩倍，大魚食小魚再高多兩倍。嗱，你留意啦，呢只鷹咧係好中意食大魚㗎。佢仲食好多添，咁你可以睇到啦，由二十五個 ppm 濃度去到只鷹就變咗一千六百個 ppm。咁呢個咁高嘅濃度咧，就最尾咧唔到嗰個蛋殼咧，就遠咗佢仲嗰度啦。好，睇翻啲文字點講先。當啲殺蟲水流咗入個海裡面啦，細小嘅植物吸咗 DDT。嗱，第一個特性大家 mark 低佢 ，DDT 係唔能夠分解嘅。亦都唔能夠排出，所以會留喺生物體內。第二個條件點解會中 DDT 毒呢？由於每一隻嘅甲殼動物或者只鷹咧，要食好多，食少少唔會有事，係食得多先有事嘅啫。跟住又係啦，排出唔到，慢慢裡面個濃度就越嚟越高。咁乜嘢殺死嗰只雀啊？原來就係我哋教多一次濃度效應。好啦，咁呢個咧，我哋就叫做咧生物放大。咁其實唔係就係得 DDT 嘅，一啲嘅重金屬控啦、鉛啦，或者我哋啲藻花啦，放嗰啲毒素，其實都係生物聚積嘅。好啦，今日嘅功課咧就係做第八條。OK， 好，咁我哋講住咁多先。